points for you. Let's get in some more fundamental analysis. Prakash Thivan joins us to help us out with just that. Hi, Prakash. Good morning and good to see you, Vin, as always. Prakash, tell us, what's the view on Seat? They've gone ahead. They've done some inorganic growth. $220 million is what they're paying. Roughly, I think, on an EV upon sales, it's around 1.1 times. What's your view on the stock? Yeah, uh, good morning, Nigel. So I think, first and foremost, uh, let me talk about this acquisition, and then we'll talk about the general health of the business. I think this this definitely makes a lot of imminent sense for them to uh, move into a you know a, a segment that probably you know is is what they will need to expand beyond the conventional uh, place that they are in. Uh, this is a good acquisition. I don't think they are overpaying. Uh, it's extremely difficult to develop uh, uh, and bring yourself to that kind of a stage where you know in terms of the burn that you have to uh, and and Canso is you know probably giving them what helps yet compete with a lot of the other uh, off-roading uh, you know, areas. See, what, what's likely to happen for most tire companies is that the rubber pricing uh, that we saw uh, in the beginning of this financial year was a bit uh, firm. That's that's kind of softening towards the end of this year and maybe calendar 25 is even softer. So, all the issues that they faced in terms of you know the raw material volatility, that could probably be put to rest. And uh, their ability to grow into these newer segments that have started, for example, the Thar comes with a SEAT, uh, you know, relationship. And you could you could have more of these on the electric vehicle side also expanding, uh, them expanding into those segments which are likely to be high growth areas. So I think they, they have their act together. Balance sheet's pretty healthy. It's just a matter of whether you want to allocate uh, money to a SEAT or a JK or, you know, any of those that you choose. Uh, within the tire space, but I think the the space definitely looks uh, quite promising uh, for the times coming ahead. Mm, okay, so uh, Seat uh, is going to be in focus as well. Uh, Prakash, hi, good morning. Let me take you back to uh, where you are from, right, Goa, because we've got news from one of the companies over there, uh, Delta. Now they announced, I think, uh, late on Friday that there's a slight revision in that demerger plan. And the company's sort of faced a lot. It's, it's been quite a year for them. Now they're demerging the real estate and the hospitality business. But I think one of the major properties that they're coming up with that will be separately demerged into a subsidiary of this new company. Uh, what do you think of it? Because there's been, there's been a lot of choppiness and value destruction in Delta Corp. Any sense in looking at the stock? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely uh, no way... Can okay, you hear I think me? The, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Slightly sticky line, uh, uh, but uh, but go on, go on. We can hear you. I don't. Uh, you know, phase where there's there's too much of that GST overhang that just refuses to go go away, and even the competitive intensity in that space will be is not the same what Delta had. In fact, that's the only company in the listed space. That's why we talk about it. But there are seven other players uh, right next to them which compete for market share or whatever, you know, footfalls and all. So for them to be able to leverage some of these assets that they have, which may not have the regulatory overhang, is a very wise thing to do. So I think it's a smart move. Uh, they'll probably be able to get themselves to not just uh, diversify, but de-risk themselves completely out of that uh, regulatory overhang. So it's positive, but, you know, we'll have to wait for the timelines, the kind of allocations that they decide to make and, you know, who's going to be backing them up in terms of managing this real estate assets, in terms of hospitality partners and also, there's still some time, but uh, I would believe it's a very, very positive step. Uh, so the disappointment that you've seen on the counter could probably be coming to an end. No, oh, I, I guess uh, Nigel and Prakash are, are going to be adding to the business. <laughs> you're going you're to hit Prakash uh, up, right? I remember on Friday. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, no Delta. <laughs> okay, okay. As we uh, go along. Prakash, of course, is uh, still with us. Uh, Prakash, uh, good morning, Prashantia. Uh, you know, uh, apart from all of this, Godrich Consumer put out a mid-quarter uh, update. Uh, we uh, covered that in part of top 10. Does it look good? It, uh, it just essentially still means that third quarter, at least from a consumer side, is just one company. But I don't know if this has got implications beyond just Godrich Consumer stock. Good morning, Prashant. No, I do agree. Uh, it's, it's, it's like a red flag. Uh, it's never very great to hear this kind of commentary from a large uh, FMCG player. But uh, Godrej Consumer, uh, thankfully, is just a, you know, in the Indian markets, is a niche player in some of the categories, probably a broader player in some of the uh, other categories where volumes probably would have shrunk a bit. 
but uh, it's not it's not to my understanding a complete proxy of the rural consumption pattern that you would want to see emerge uh, from that perspective you would have to give it the benefit of doubt and you'll, let's see if a dabar comes up with something you know which which is uh, or an imami tells you uh, a similar thing then it's it's something you need to take serious note of but my sense is this is all from the uh, from the recent past what is expected to change is probably you know going forward the quarter that's coming jan feb march probably could probably be better of course we keep getting optimistically uh, excited about things ahead but the numbers that we are seeing in consumption from most of the discretionary spends haven't got impacted it's the staples that uh, are the ones that are getting impacted so you have to pick and choose the companies that you want to be out of or you want to be in but i would believe fmcg still got 3 4 months to consolidate to prove itself that things are looking up so i do agree it's a, it's a little bit of a caution but uh, i would i won't let it uh, set alarm bells uh, ringing uh, just by this particular thing but yeah uh, as i said you need to allocate money uh, before some revival happens okay all right uh, prakash what about wellspun corp you know you had given us this idea i think 20 days or 15 days ago the stock has done well from there and now the anticipated order you know that the street was sniffing yeah. has come about 7000 crores of order wins in a single quarter yeah. that to the united states which actually has been a drag in fy25 so far the stock however yeah. is closer to around 800 rupees what's your view in it so absolutely nigel you look at how traction is coming back i mean 3500 crores was the order book uh, till q2 and suddenly this quarter you 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 have you know that doubling Uh, and i think it's just the start because the gas pipeline network that uh, is likely to start getting rebuilt uh, the shale gas network uh, there's no way they can't keep buying pipes and 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 fortunately they they've had the unit out there in the us the facility is there so it's not even something which could get impacted by tariffs in a very significant way unless uh, the demand outstrips the capacity of that local unit but i think the company is poised to do well uh, there's there's no reason why and remember if ukraine also ukraine russia stops in some sort of thing or takes a pause or even the middle east crisis there will be a rebuilding of a lot of these networks the the pipeline networks and supply chain so there's always enough opportunity even beyond the us remember so i think it's just a beginning of a very good virtuous cycle uh, the stocks probably well placed we we spoke about it just at about 700 under 700 bucks but it's it's just done 10% from there but my sense is there will be lots more that could kind of add up uh, as as the order flow improves and gets stronger. Mm, okay, so Wellspun Corp also a stock to watch. Prakash, what's the trade for this week? Do you see anything straight up? I mean, last week it was banks, right? And there was this big anticipation ahead of the policy, and everybody said there'll there'll be a CRR card, so banks were being bid up, and that was delivered. Now we don't know if that juice is still left in the banking pack. That was in in part a large reason why the Nifty also moved higher, right? Do you see yeah. some clear trade for this week? No, so we can be on. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'm just saying the banks might continue to do well, especially the smaller banks uh, will will participate rather than just the larger ones that have contributed to the indices. But the trade going forward is going to be, uh, you know, IT will make a comeback sometime early Jan. So if you really want to do something in anticipation, you would have to look at that, you know, Segility and those kind of stocks which have recently got listed but haven't yet. Uh, uh uh what do you call it? got celebrated in that sense because you know people haven't yet uh mastered or understood the business model completely and the other thing this would be the pocket that you could look at is you know it's green hydrogen i mean there is there is very clear indication that end of this financial year you will probably have some of the largest outputs uh, starting to rev up and, and begin commercialization so you know reliance uh, is, is the new energy vertical is one of the things that i'm referring to I would look at the uh, reliance towards the end of this year uh, and early next year to participate in the you know in this rally or whatever Santa uh, rally that we're talking about. There could be there could be some sort of a move up there for for traders. It's a very good bet, of course, from a longer term perspective. Also, it fits in. So even if you are uh, left with holding the stock for a longer period of time, you are absolutely going to be in good hands. So I think reliance is something which you would look at uh, along with some of the other intra names. All right. Uh, you know what we're going to do is, Prakash, stay with us. We'll take a quick commercial break here uh, for that uh, very, very interesting sort of you know perspective, context really, uh, in which uh, you should view this. 
Uh, and uh, we'll, of course, track uh, the announcement and uh, cover this extensively as and when it sort of comes through. Prakash, of course, is still with us. I think we are two minutes into the pre-open session. Uh, Prakash, uh, thank you for waiting. You know, on Friday, uh, you had these auto names all which uh, went up sharply. Tata Motors, Bajaj, Maruti were the three top gainers in the Nifty. Uh, and uh, so I don't know if you have a quick thought on that. And then come in on these uh, smaller power names, which had a field day. HBL Power was up sharply. There was, that, of course, the, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a battery slash you know, cover shorters, etc. HPL Electric, smart meters, Voltamp was up sharply. Go on. So, Prashant, uh, let me take this power uh, cluster uh, out of the way. I think HBL Power, of course, was in anticipation of uh, order rolling out to them as well after what's come through Garnex. Uh, uh, but it's, it's, it's more you know, one-off at this point in time. Uh, but what's interesting is in the power value chain, uh, beyond the transformers, there's a host of uh, smaller equipment suppliers who are kind of smarting up. Uh, one is, of course, the secure meters growth that we're talking about. Of course, implementation is a challenge. But the global setup uh, for anybody who's willing to export, who's capable of exporting, and I'm going back to some of the well-known names like Silcher and TRIL, Apart. There is so much of demand uh, globally for power transmission, not just uh, generation, that they, their order book for the next two and a half, three years is absolutely strongly built. Uh, but don't don't ignore the bigger ones out there, Tata Power and you know Torrent, uh, for, for various other reasons uh, in that value chain. So this is expected to do well, uh, but then valuations is something that you need to be comfortable with. But uh, on the auto side, uh, I can only leave you with one thought, that it's only the two-wheeler space that will probably see a pickup because the competitiveness in the passenger cars is really something which is very, very, uh, you know, intense. And, and there's none of the companies that could kind of very easily do well, except for maybe a Maruti with its hybrid portfolio getting to be expanded. And watch out for Mahindra. Uh, I know Surbhi will catch me for this next time, but the electric vehicle launch that they've had is still underrated or under you know, what you call fathomed by the market in terms of the potential that it has. If you take a look at the vehicle, you realize what I'm talking about. Uh, they could probably, you know, grow absolutely at a scorching pace once people understand what they're offering at that price point is so, so, uh, you know, powerful as a package. So uh, okay. I would watch out for that, uh, but it might take some time. It's not something which will happen today or this week, but in the next quarter or two, you'll probably see a whole uh, uh, re-rating of sorts only on the basis of the new launches that Mahindra has made. That's interesting, uh, Prakash. I think you've managed to get a closer look at the cars. Last time when we were discussing it, last week when yes. the launch happened, you said you need to you know, check it out for yourself. So this is interesting. Uh, sets us up for a good conversation next time. Or I want to know what exactly you like. But that's for yeah. later. By the way, the, that whole 6E uh, court battle, that's also continuing. Not that it has an impact, you know, immediate bearing on financials of the stock. But that's interesting. They're, they're in a big tussle with uh, Indigo over the use of the brand uh, 6E. All right.